going on everybody? My name is Johnny Bandon and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Trebo Technologies. In today's video, we're going to be going over physical security, which is a part of domain 1.2 for the Security Plus SY0-701 exam. So <laughs> every time I teach this, it is very boring. That's not to discourage you. You find that a lot of times in cybersecurity, we forget about every other aspect of security besides just the technical. We love learning about new technologies, automating response, doing our dashboards, creating our dashboards, and doing analysis. But sometimes as cybersecurity professionals, we forget about the very basics in our defense in depth approach. And one of those basics is having physical security for your compounds and your organizations, which is something you have to worry about as a cybersecurity professional. So with that being said, let me go ahead and get my face out of the way and let's go ahead and jump right into our physical security slides. Okay, so security of your enterprise is not always ones and zeros. And just a little disclaimer, guys, as I go through these slides, it's just going to be learning all these different physical security components. I'm going to be doing definitions and that's it. That's the slide deck, okay? At the end, we'll go do a three-question quiz and then that'll be our physical security section. Super boring, I know, but it's just we got to get through it to get certified. So security practitioners also need to implement physical controls alongside their technical controls to have a robust defensive depth approach to securing the enterprise. So the first thing we're going to talk about is bullards. These are the poster obstacles that prevent vehicles from moving through an area. And this is going to be what's called a preventative control. Then we have access control vestibules, otherwise known as man traps. These are physical secure, this man traps are physical security designs to prevent unauthorized access to people trying to piggyback. So what we're talking about here is someone wants to get access secure area. So they, let's say, scan their badge and then someone comes up behind them and gets access to that secure area that otherwise would not. A good way to prevent that is with this man trap or what's called an access control vestibule, which has two doors here, uh, one to get in and then another door they have to scan in. So you can kind of see that someone piggybacked off you. You would probably have cameras in there. Or you can even have your reception desk in that man trap as well to kind of see who is trying to piggyback. This is going to be a preventative and detective control as well. Badges. So badges are used with a radio frequency ID and proximity readers as a way to authorize access and control access to secure areas. So badges along with badge readers or proximity readers are used to grant you or deny you access to those secure areas. So this is a preventative and detective control. Detective because when you try to badge in somewhere, that's going to get logged to that centralized badging system or server. Preventative because it won't let you in unless you have the right permissions and your badge works, right? Alarms. So this is a physical security control that will alert a guard or remote system that someone or something has been seen or set off by motion. This is gonna be detective and deterrent control. Signage. So these are signs that designate a secure area or tell unauthorized persons they cannot be there. So that's gonna be deterrent control. Obviously that sign telling you to keep out can't physically stop you. And it also doesn't detect anything, right? It doesn't alert any security personnel. Cameras, a part of a CCTV system. They are preventative, detective, and deterrent control. Don't ask me why it's preventative, just ask CompTIA. Um, cameras can't physically stop you, uh, but they can do detection and deterrent controls. CCTV, that closed circuit television, this is a system made up of security cameras, monitors, motion recognition, and typically a person monitoring those CCTV feeds. So CCTVs are constantly being monitored, and these are preventative, detective, and deterrent control. Preventative because that person watching can alert a security, a roaming guard, and they can go stop, physically stop someone. Detective because obviously it's being monitored. And deterrent because a threat actor that maybe wants to come into your compound unauthorized may see that CCTV system and think otherwise. Industrial camouflage. So this is designing buildings with sensitive data like a, a SCIF or like government work to just look like a typical building to blend in with the surrounding area. So imagine you're just in a, a downtown area, you see a bunch of offices, and you don't know that behind that lawyer's office is actually uh, a top secret skiff, okay? That's industrial camouflage. Personnel. People are also a form of security, so having roaming guards, having that 
visitor or that reception desk is a part of your physical control to your compound okay so this is preventative detective and deterrent locks so locks whether that be specific computer locks locks to your actual office area those are going to be preventative and deterrent controls lighting that's going to be another detective and deterrent control for spotting would-be intruders at night or in dark areas of your uh compound or data center fencing so they say this is a deterrent control uh a fence could be preventative though as well right i mean if the fence is big enough if it's electric it could physically prevent someone from trying to climb it um again i just go off what comptia wants this says it's a deterrent control okay so it's deterrent fire suppression so the safety of your employees right that's also a part of your roles as a cybersecurity professional making sure there's fire suppression when it comes to the systems you may manage right like in your data center or in your it equipment sensors so uh, speaking of fire suppression as well, in the data center, you don't, you can't use water on those electrical fires. So that may be something you may have to be aware of if you're a cybersecurity engineer that helps manage and secure an on-prem data center. Sensors. So sensors are a part of other systems we discussed here, like proximity, motion, moisture, RFD, and temperature systems all contain some sort of sensor that will all go off and then alert you. So other forms of physical security, this can be the last slide, is visitor logs. So used with that reception desk or security guards. There can be a way to validate a user's identity. A Faraday cage, this is going to be an enclosure made up of conductive mesh that distributes charges from wireless device signals, thus stopping them. So a, a Faraday cage is pretty much stops signal from coming in, okay? And then air gap. So this is going to be a term that describes the physical separation of devices that cannot connect they're physically separated so you see this a lot with like our scatter or ics networks like our industrial networks and our enterprise sometimes you'll have that physical air gap network this should be the standard when you're setting up a cctv system as well that should be completely segmented separate should have no bound cross boundaries between your enterprise when you have that cctv system okay so that's going to be it for the slides now let's go ahead and bring in our practice exam software here and go over the quiz that corresponds to this lesson so here i'm on our academy page this is our learning management system that uh we use that you get access to when you purchase our self-paced or live virtual training and with your purchase comes this practice exam software of over a thousand questions and quizzes for every single lesson so question one what i'm going to do here is just read the question i want you to pause the video and then I'm going to ant, then you can play it once you've answered, and then I'll answer the question as well. So question one, which of the following is an example of a physical security measure? So I'm going to go with implementing biometric access control systems. And what's great about our software here is that whether you answer the wrong or the right answer, you're always going to see what the correct answer is down here, and you're also going to get an explanation. So explanation, biometric access control systems, they are a part of your physical security. Question two, what is the primary purpose of physical security in a cybersecurity context? Okay, so this one, actually, I am going to go with C, to protect physical assets, but this could also be B as well. Um, Part of physical safety of your employees is part of that physical security, uh, is part of your role, right? Like with the fire suppression systems. However, C is definitely the more correct answer. And I actually like this question because this is kind of how comp T exams are, right? Two are obviously wrong and then two may be very similar. So the correct answer is C, to protect physical access, such as servers and data centers from physical threats. Now, question three. What role does surveillance play in physical security? So I'm going to answer the wrong answer here, just so you can see how our software responds when you get the wrong answer. So the correct answer would be B. We'll submit the wrong answer. And look here, it tells us what the correct one is and also gives us an explanation here of why the correct answer is B. So surveillance through tools like CCTV cameras play a vital role in physical security. It serves as both a deterrent against unauthorized access or actions and a means of detection and documentation. 
All right, thank you everyone for viewing. I just want to put a little disclaimer out there that if you're an active duty soldier, reserve soldier, National Guard soldier, you can get up to four grand a year for all your certification training paid for by the Army through the Army Ignited system. So if you're interested in live virtual training or our self-paced training course, click that link in the description below and reach out to us and see how we can walk you through getting funding for all your certification needs. If you're part of a corporation or a military unit that does IT certification boot camps, click the link in the description below, reach out to us. We love to come bring our entire setup, our lab equipment, and get you and your employees certified. Thank you for viewing and do not forget to like and subscribe.